Hello, my name is Dr. Pierre Skagen. I'm a specialist registrar in anesthesia and critical care with the College of Anesthetists of Ireland. It's my pleasure today to discuss an upcoming publication in Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Sodium Correction Practice and Clinical Outcomes in Profound Hyponatremia. This work was completed in collaboration with the Metric Group at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester in Minnesota. Hyponatremia is a common electrolyte abnormality in hospitalized patients, and dysnatremia is an independent risk factor for in-hospital mortality. Profound hyponatremia, or a serum sodium less than 120 millimoles per liter, is less common, but when it occurs acutely, it can lead to cerebral edema and its attendant morbidity and mortality. When profound hyponatremia persists for more than about 48 hours, brain adaptations occur, which are beneficial. However, after these adaptations occur, if the serum sodium level is rapidly corrected, this can lead to osmotic demyelination and its attendant morbidity and mortality. Patients who are hospitalized with profound hyponatremia represent a particular clinical challenge because the duration of hyponatremia will in general be unknown. Therefore, clinicians will wish to correct the serum sodium so as to avoid any possible or potential cerebral edema while simultaneously avoiding rapid rates of correction, so as to account for the possibility that the hyponatremia is chronic. This leaves the clinicians with a very narrow range of optimal sodium correction. In the current study, we used an electronic medical record search to identify all patients admitted to the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota over a five-year period with profound hyponatremia. We classified these patients as having optimally or non-optimally corrected hyponatremia based on their estimated serum sodium at 24 hours after admission. Optimal sodium correction was defined as a rise in serum sodium of between 6 and 10 millimoles per liter in the first 24 hours. We investigated associations between patient and treatment factors and sodium correction outcome. We also investigated any association between sodium correction outcome and patient morbidity and in-hospital mortality. 412 patients were included in our study. When we looked at sodium correction at 24 hours after admission, we observed that 51% of our patients had optimal correction of their hyponatremia, while 28% of patients had overcorrection and 21% of patients had undercorrection. Several patient and treatment factors were associated with non-optimal correction, and these are discussed in more detail in the article. We did not observe any association between non-optimal correction of profound hyponatremia and in-hospital mortality or ICU length of stay. In an adjusted analysis, undercorrection of profound hyponatremia was associated with an increase in total hospital length. In patients who experienced overcorrection of their profound hyponatremia, we observed a single case of osmotic demyelination syndrome, corresponding to an incidence of about 1%. There are two main take-home messages from our study. Firstly, non-optimal correction of profound hyponatremia seems to occur very commonly. Secondly, although non-optimal correction of profound hyponatremia occurs very commonly, Fortunately, it seems to be associated with serious patient morbidity only infrequently. Specifically, osmotic demyelination syndrome occurred in only a single patient in our cohort, corresponding to an incidence of about 1% in patients who had overcorrection of their profound hyponatremia. Additionally, we did not observe any association between non-optimal correction and in-hospital mortality or ICU length of stay. Our study has several limitations. Firstly, it is a retrospective study. Secondly, it is a single center study and its results would require replication in other centers. Thirdly, experts have disagreed on the definition of optimal correction of profound hyponatremia and as such, our own definition is open to debate. Thank you very much for your interest in our study. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.